Hey everybody, it's Josh Rutledge, your co-host for Fearscape Paranormal Podcast. Thank you so much for listening. If you'd like to support us more, please head over to our website, fearscapepodcast.com. There you can click on store and browse some really awesome t-shirts and maybe pick a couple up, or even go to our Patreon page and see how you can support us monthly. We love bringing you awesome content just as much as you like listening to it. Enjoy the show. Hello. I'm so glad you could join us. I hope you brought your blanket to hide under. The spooky crew is going to discuss things and events from other realms. Ghosts. Cryptids. Aliens. Be sure to hold your blanket extra tight as the boys take you deep into the fear scale, fear scale, fear scale. <laughs> Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another spooky edition of Fearscape Paranormal Podcast. We are here to spook you out. That's right. It is the Spooky Crew. My name is Stefan Gearhart, your host for the evening, joined as usual by once again my virtual reality co-host, yep. Josh Rutledge, the man with earlobes the size of dinner plates. <laughs> Love you. Yeah, I always I always wondered if if uh, if I were ever to do that that gauging thing, if I would ever get it big enough to actually put like a saucer or something in there. Well, they're they're already there, so you wouldn't even have to gauge; you just have to pierce because they're already that big. Oh, really? My yeah. my lobes are that big. Yeah, okay. I can just get a hole puncher and do it, <laughs> hold you down, and I can do it, and we can get some uh, saucers in there. If I can wear the neck thing that stretches your neck, yeah, and then we can look like African tribal guys. That'd be kind of cool. Or like, you know, Ferengi. So. Ferengi, yeah. Yeah, absolutely, Ferengi. <laughs> um, well, thank you for tuning in, everybody. We've got a really cool show. We've got another Getting Spooky episode. We're going to be Getting Spooky with Tori Smith from the Paranormal Help Desk. And uh, say hello, Tori. Hello. Be quick and easy. That's how I like it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for uh, joining us uh, during our quarantine so we can all just join in on Zoom. It's, you know, it's actually forced us to get used to interviewing people this way. And so it's been working out pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, if you haven't already, you should probably buy stock in Zoom. I'm sure they're just. That's what I said. And Charmin. <laughs> yeah. Zoom and Charmin. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And, um, uh, hand sanitizer. Yes. Hand sanitizer. That's <laughs> the other one I was trying to think of. And Netflix, apparently. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we gotta, we, we're going to be getting to you in just a moment, uh, interviewing you and having a good time, but we'd love to in, uh, have you join us on the rest of our show. Um, and so to get things kicking off for this episode, we are going to be pulling out our psychic word of the day, or of the week, I guess, from the Encyclopedic Psychic Dictionary. All right, so the word that I have is, of course, a phrase again. Get ready for this, guys. The, the phrase that I've, I, I randomly just flipped through this book, The Encyclopedic Psychic Dictionary by June Bletzer from 1986. And the phrase that grabbed my eye was poltergeist missiles. Okay. Is that, <laughs> are you shooting poltergeist at people? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but here we go. Uh, so poltergeist missiles, feats that have been recorded by the unexplainable phenomena occurring from a poltergeist, teleportation of articles, flinging of mud or stones when none were around, objects being smashed from a person's hand and the person remains unharmed, stones whizzing through the air and landing like a feather, turning on and off household appliances, whistling, singing, and talking. Uh, it also says on the bottom water without cause. I don't, I don't know what that means. <laughs> I guess I'll have to look that one up. <laughs> so, it, so it's basically physical, um, results from a poltergeist. Uh, yeah, that's what I, you know, it, it basically shows all these things like this chaos, right? It's like, here's all these crazy things being thrown at you and smashed. And then it's like turning on and off of appliances. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, I mean, so if, if I say, uh, hey, Alexa, turn on the microwave, does that mean I have a poltergeist? I think so. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I looked up water without cause, and it just basically says the phenomena of water dripping from the ceiling with no discernible cause. So believed to be poltergeist activity. So, again, poltergeist missiles. I have never in my life heard this term. And I've watched a lot of scary movies, a lot of scary documentaries, read books galore, and I have yet to hear Poltergeist Missiles. But for our blanket hugger listeners out there, it's time to start hashtagging that bad boy. <laughs> <laughs> so from here on out, let's start hashtagging Poltergeist Missiles anytime anything uh, has moved magically. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, Lord, Poltergeist Missiles, man. See, I just imagine, you know, if you you load all the poltergeists into a missile mm-hmm. and you fire them at your at your enemies and then they have all the poltergeists going on and they're you know that's 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 the uh, that's the <laughs> well, next yeah. military so, threshold yeah so if the trap is green the, or the light is green the trap is clean right so right. <laughs> you want a red trap okay and you want to put that in a bazooka and shoot that to to pax house or whatever that guy's name was right so that he's got all the ghosts that's right yeah. So, so, yeah, essentially when the reactor busted in Ghostbusters, that was a huge poltergeist missile. Yes. <laughs> huge. 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 <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, speaking of huge, let's move to spooky news. All right, guys, for this week, I've got two short stories. Uh, I couldn't choose which one I wanted, so I went with both. Um, do you want to go with Satan or Robbie Williams first? Satan. Satan. All right. So Satan, uh, the, the headline is, <laughs> and get ready for this. This comes from uh, News 4 SA, or, well, News 4 San Antonio. The headline reads, San Antonio Satanic Group Holding Menstruation with Satan Charity Drive. Um, yeah. So uh, file this and things you don't see every day. The Satanic Temple San Antonio announced its first ever Menstruating with Satan charity drive to make feminine hygiene products available to all people in need. Menstruation is a non-optional physical reality for many people and the continued stigmatization of menstruation is harmful to everyone, the Satanic group uh, said in a Facebook group. And so they're getting that together for people during Corona to make sure that uh, you can get get your um your supplies sanit- your sanitary yeah. napkins <laughs> yeah sanitary napkins so so i mean it, at least it's for a good cause right oh I mean, they always are though that's the yeah. misconception about right. the uh satanic temple which is different than the satanic church by the way um but yeah the satanic temple these are the folks i believe that are behind the uh statue um of uh of Baphomet wanting to put out in front of the courthouse okay. uh, since the Ten Commandments got put up. They wanted theirs, so they built this giant statue, and it, the exact same statue was shown in The Chilling Tales of Sabrina, which is a freaking awesome. So um, I'm just going to say that from a literary standpoint, Big Butter Baphomet is a really... <laughs> That's better than Big, Big Butter, Butter Jesus. Jesus that got, yeah, well, Big Butter Jesus got, uh, he got melted. Killed, yeah. He got <laughs> melted by Thor. <laughs> Thor won that battle. Um, so there's a new one now um, that's extra creepy as well. I don't know. I, I drive by that thing going home to Toledo all the time. It's weird. Um, so the other one here that we have comes from uh, KOIN.com. This is in Portland, I believe. Uh, and this says that pop star Robbie Williams is a student of paranormal phenomena. So, yeah, Robbie Williams, man. Um, so Americans are still getting to know British pop star Robbie Williams, and there's much to share from the star than meets the eye. Investigative reporter George Knapps talks to Williams about his interest in the paranormal in this one-on-one interview here. Uh, So basically, we know Robbie Williams has sold tens of millions of records all over the world and is a major star, but most people don't know that he's had multiple encounters with the paranormal. Williams typically plays to packed stadiums in Europe and all over the world, but he's not as well known in the U.S. He still hopes to use that Las Vegas residency to establish a stronger foothold whenever the world gets back to normal. He spoke to uh, Knapp here about his career, 
but mostly in his interest in unexplained phenomena. I can't remember not being interested in unusual phenomena, Williams says. And unusual phenomena has found its way to me several times. And once you see things and once you experience things, then it's very difficult to not remain interested and inquisitive and want to know what's real, what isn't real, why this is happening, and what was that. Williams says that some of his experiences were even witnessed by other people as well. And he's actively sought out weird places too, including a weekend stay in and around the infamous Skinwalker Ranch in Utah. And you can go to mysterywire.com if you want to see the entire interview, uh, but mostly that was our part about the paranormal. Um, and he says something that we talk about all the time. It's like, once you experience something, it's go time. Yeah. Like no there's... No putting the genie back in the bottle. No, no. It, it, not only will you be interested in it, but you will be affected by it yeah. um, uh, forever, I guess, unless you can magically turn that off. I don't know. I mean, even those, I mean, I, I have times when I try to lessen the exposure, yes. right? But, but yeah, I mean, even then it's just, it slips through like cracks, you know, it sl so slips through. So, yep, yep. But yeah, so that's our spooky news, man. So we've got Satan and Robbie Williams, and uh, they could have been one in the same. You didn't even know. Yeah, don't know. <laughs> oh, Robbie Williams. He's still looking good, man. Still looking good. Looking like he's 40. Um, just like me. Um, all right, so let's go you ahead. You are 40. I know. That's why I said just like okay, me. Okay, okay. Um, all right, so, well, let's go ahead and move into our next segment, which is our UFO sighting of the week with Josh. All right, Josh, what do we got? What, what we, we, you know, we've been having our own experiences lately with UFOs. We talked about it last week and, oh, actually t the last couple weeks. Um, yeah. And we've been finding some things that have kind of fit that other people's uh, UFO sightings have kind of, we've shared that with ours and stuff like that. But what are some other ones that are going on? What's, what's one you found this week? Yeah. So this one comes from Tabor, Alberta, Canada. Ooh, Canada. Um, and this actually, um, I think the sighting probably occurred uh, sometime before the way that the article or the way that the uh, uh, story is written, but it was, it was reported on uh, March 18th. It took me years to accept and even talk with my wife, who is a witness to and was standing right beside me during this experience. I truly feel that if it wasn't for me bringing it up, it would never be spoken about. And that bothers me. The date of our experience is close, I think. Anyways, here's my account. Approximate date and time reported. My wife and I were in our backyard smoking a cigarette, about to go to bed when we noticed the absolute consuming imprint and defining red lights of a triangular shaped craft that was moving from south to north above our home in Tabor, Alberta. This thing was massive. It was above. I was able to judge just how big the object was by comparing the red lights that defined its shape versus the size of my roof, which was really in my direct line of sight. It made no noise, nor did not change course or elevation during the entire time it was visible to us. The red lights that predominantly defined its shape and height in the sky never fluctuated in any way, shape, or form. Solid red, no center red light. Just the three at each point of the triangular shaped object. It continued to move in a northern direction until it left our view. We went to bed and didn't talk about it for years. This is really crazy stuff. Wow. Whew. You know what's That's interesting? Crazy. Yeah, what's interesting is that a lot of these are similar in some a lot of the other sightings that we see and hear about and things like that. And so, you know, the skeptic says, oh, well, they've heard those other things before. That's why they're saying that. Right. Whereas the believer in me says, look, here's another instance. Right. You know, here's well, someone saying the same thing. We've talked about it probably till we're blue in the face. Um, but just the, the double standard that exists for... 
uh, anything outside of the paranormal realm doesn't need to go through the the proof or the burden of evidence like the paranormal stuff does. Right. You know, and include. I mean, you know, you could have two people um, being a witness to a crime, and they would have two like very different stories, and people would be like, "Yeah, those both things probably happened." Yeah, but yeah, they saw it differently. <laughs> <laughs> but if you have two people sharing the a different paranormal you, story yeah. you know they're like well I'll see there's proof and then if you have them both saying they go well I'll see there's proof <laughs> must, must have been a group hallucination yeah <laughs> that's my that's my favorite they all ate Taco Bell that afternoon yeah that's the problem group hallucinations are, are my favorite yeah um, they all saw we, swamp gas a lot of us went to college and I don't even think we experienced group hallucinations <laughs> <No>. <laughs> They were still individual. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, Lordy Bagordy. How are those Canadians? Aren't they number two behind us with the most sightings? Uh, I, think, well, I think, yeah, it's really close with them in UK. Yeah, MUFON just released their um, month report. Here it is. The UFO statistics, sighting statistics for March 2020. Uh, in March alone, the United States had 672 sightings uh, reported to MUFON. Uh, and it was United Kingdom was at 91 this month and 44 for Canada. But usually Canada's up there a second. Yeah. Um, do they have a, uh, a mutual ghost network, you know, where you can report sightings? Like, is, 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 is no one tracking, like, haunting or poltergeist experiences? Not that I've been able to find. Tori, do you know, since you're the uh, helping us on the help desk there? <laughs> Not that I've ever heard of. I imagine if you had a database like that, though, like it would be just the amount every day would be insane. Yeah, because I know there's a there's a cryptid, there's a Bigfoot one where they track Bigfoot sightings. I wonder why there's not a ghost one. Josh, business idea. Let's go ahead and copyright that. Well, um, and then we talked about putting all sightings into yeah. a, a button as well. Um, but, yeah. but, but you know, Tori's, Tori's probably right. I mean, it, think about it. The number of people who have uh, multiple times a day experiences with a ghost type oh, thing. Oh yeah, Jesus. Um, I mean, you know, most most UFO Just sightings. Just our creepy catch-ups. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> so you know, most UFO sightings are probably like once every couple of days, whereas ghost encounters are probably multiple times a day. Especially if day. you live in a house, you know. Yeah. Exactly. Especially yeah. if you live in the house. I don't know. Oh yeah. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Well, oh, food for thought, but yeah, let's, uh, speaking of, uh, that stuff, let's go ahead and move right into creepy ketchup. Creepy ketchup. Creepy ketchup. Creepy ketchup. Creepy ketchup. Y'all, it's creepy. So yeah, here we are. Creepy ketchup. Uh, talking about the things that have happened to us recently, um, that is creepy, unexplainable, weird. And Tori, you are very welcome to share any that you've had. Awesome. Josh, I got a good one. <laughs> oh, good. Josh, you got anything? So the only thing that I've had uh, recently is I'm, I'm going back down the, uh, the whole uh, ultra terrestrial path again. Like I keep kind of flip flopping between you do, e you do. ET versus UT. And so the only thing that the other night I was watching this thing about hollow earth. Mm -hmm. um, and then I had a dream about Hollow Earth. Interesting. Uh, our, our good friend, Mr. Indrid Cold, was in that dream. And so um, I don't remember a lot from it. I just remember that, like, Indrid came to my house and he was like, here, let's go. And, like, we went and got in this ship and then we went and flew to, like, the North Pole and we went down this tunnel into Hollow Earth. So that, that was probably a little bit of because they did that in the show that I watched about hollow earth. And so then, you know, a little bit of that, and a little bit of danger. So I, I don't know how much of it I want to just say, it's just my subconscious piece and little things together versus an actual, you know, foretelling or, or insightful type dream. Yeah. Um, Indrid, gotta love Indrid cold. Um, for me, um, Last night, I was uh, going down to change the cat litter. It's down in the basement, which is where I tend to have a lot of the experiences. And I was already like, nope, mm -mm, no, 
not today, Satan, not today. <laughs> and of course, you know, whatever's down there was like, oh, no, don't worry about it. I'm going to get you anyways. <laughs> and just starts like, I feel like this, like, like air in my ear, you know, like, like someone's just blowing in your ear. So it's not like a breeze. It's literally like, cause I can hear it go, you know, like, yeah. like it's, it's filling, it's filling my eardrum and there's no one there. And I'm like, okay, okay. I just said not today, <laughs> said not today. And I'm scared, but I'm like, if, if I, if I don't get this cat litter clean, I'm going to be more scared of my wife. And so I'm trying to get this cat litter cleaned. And you know, it's like, and then I feel like, like fingers walking up my back. Oh, as I'm bent over and I'm like, come on, man, I'm six, five. It's already hard enough to bend over and clean this cat litter. And you're going to run fingers <laughs> on my back. And that did it. That gave me the heebie jeebies. And I ran, I ran, I got, I got everything clean. So I'm running with like the bag in my hand, but I've run upstairs. I'm glad it didn't bust. <laughs> oh, if I had a busted, if it had busted, I'd have moved. <laughs> uh, but I get upstairs. Okay. And so I'm sitting there, I'm watching, uh, what was I watching? Um, I was watching a bunch of old anime, but at, at the point I was, I was watching this movie called uh, Devil's Gate. Uh, it's on Hulu. I recommend it. It's kind of like a low key alien horror movie, but it's got uh, Jonathan Frakes in it uh, from Star Trek and um, one of the Ashmore twins and um, one of the dudes from Heroes. Um, but it's pretty cool. Anyways, I was watching that. And all of a sudden this big crash comes from the dining room and I'm like, you stupid cats. And then I look over and they're both freaking out next to me and the dog's next to me. So there, so there was not, it wasn't the cats. It wasn't the dog. Wife's asleep on the other side of the house. And I was like, okay, we're done. We're done. And so I threw down some like <laughs> some pagan blessing stuff. And I was like, I ain't got time for you. I'm scared. It's night. I don't, I don't want to deal with this. So that all happened within the span of like 30 minutes. Wow. So. Well, and it's really neat because the time that I was over there and I felt something kind of stand next to me and then touch me on the shoulder mm -hmm. was is like right there where it kind of goes into your dining room. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's, I'm telling you, I know it's, I know it's, so Tori, the, the, my neighborhood randomly has a cemetery in it. It's like a small, tiny little plot. And I, we moved into my in-laws house while we were selling our house. So I didn't notice I'm looking out the back window and adjacent to our backyard is the cemetery. You know, it's got about like 10 plots in it. And I was like, what the hell is that? And she's like, Oh yeah, that's the neighborhood cemetery. <laughs> that's been there oh since, since before the neighborhood was there. And Louisville's got these things all over Louisville. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. These randomly you'll be at a business and behind there, them this old cemetery from the 1800s. It's there's like a couple, there's like a couple in the zoo. Yeah, there is. There wow. is. Wow. So, yeah. Where Sarah works over uh, behind Oxmoor, there's one. I, I took a picture. I was going to show you. Literally behind her work. Huh. Um, just wow. Just a small, I mean, 10 to 20 plot cemetery, you know. So, you know, all those all those old farms that used yeah. to be, uh, you know, people used to bury on their own farm and stuff. And so it just kind of gets left behind and you build around it. Which, thank goodness, because in Toledo, they just moved stuff where I'm from. They just moved the cemetery. And I'm like, have you all not seen Poltergeist? <laughs> right? <laughs> Like you don't do that. There's gonna be Poltergeist missiles coming at you, man. Like you gotta, you gotta, you've, you've yeah. been wanting to use that, haven't you? Oh yeah, it, it worked. It worked out really good. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, what do you? So you said you got some, Tori? I do. Um, I I gosh, I got like a whole list of them. But my most recent one was probably about. Oh, three months ago ish, right in there. And in real life, I'm an ER nurse. I work night shift. Oh boy. <laughs> um, so, me and we have what we call a nurse's aide, and they come in with us and they help do just like the tasks that need to be done, like EKGs and blood pressures and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, we brought a patient back that was there, and she had um, a family friend with her that was with, that brought her in or whatever and when we were taking her into the room she's like do we have to go in this room and I was like well we're we're full this is all we have she's like no it'll be fine it'll be fine and I didn't really inquire on uh why she had hesitation By the aversion, yeah right 
and I should have when you find out later. <laughs> anyway, her friend was sitting on the side, like on the side of the bed, like in a chair. She was in the bed and I was standing there asking questions and my aide was doing her thing. And then all of a sudden we heard like what I call it a scream whisper. I don't know what anybody else calls it, but it was no intelligible words. It was just, it just goes <sighs> like that. And I, mm -mm. I looked at my aide mm -mm. and her head slowly turned and looked at me. And I was like, did you hear that? And she goes, yeah, what was that? And I said, I have no idea. And the patient, she said, yeah, I heard that too. And the fa the family friend or whatever, he's like, I don't know what that was. And then the patient goes, I bet that was my husband. He died in this room three months ago. Oh, oh my goodness. No way. <laughs> oh, yeah. wow. No way. Oh, <laughs> yeah. my God. Yes, that's exactly what you mean crazy. by scream whisper. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, I can't even imagine the amount of ghosts that fill oh. up an ER. We see there. things occasionally. Lately, we've been seeing like a fleshy colored, uh, uh, I, I would call it maybe an apparition. I'm not really sure, but you don't really get a good enough look at it to really tell what it is, but you do see skin tone with it. You'll see it out of the wow. corner of your eye. Mm. And then when you turn to look, it's not there. It's gone. Yeah. I, my, uh, uh, we recently, recently moved. And before we moved, the, my dentist uh, was in front of the main cemetery uh, for the town that I used to live in. And <clears throat> I was in there one day and I asked them if they'd ever had any, you know, ghosts or anything kind of stuff happen. They said one time they were back in, uh, in the x-ray room uh, and um, they uh, had like set up this older gentleman with, you know, the, the whole lead vest and everything and had left the room and uh, he was in there just talking away to somebody and there was <laughs> nobody in the room. <laughs> And so they went back in and they said, you know, who were you talking to? And like, oh, you know, so, such and such was staying in here keeping me company. And there was nobody, I mean, there was nobody else in the room. So, yeah. I, and that was just in a dentist office, you know, bordering, yeah. bordering a cemetery. Well, so it's interesting because, you know, my sister is a nurse, but she's a psych, a psych nurse. And mm -hmm. so she has, she has gifts as well. She can um, see and speak to those that have passed on. Hush it, buddy. Sorry, my dog's whining. And um, <laughs> and uh, anyways, like she she can kind of tell when they're kind of cuckoo or when they're actually seeing things because it kind of lines up right? with what she's feeling. But then there was one time that she told me that one of the patients was like, without her prompting it, without anything, it said, she the, uh, the patient told her, um, Trisha, it said it doesn't want you to see it. And she was like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's so. crazy. There is a lot of ghost stories in healthcare. And I I mean, it, it's, it's really quite crazy. And I've often wondered what the correlation between mental health and maybe abilities, how often it gets confused. We yeah. talk about that a lot on here. We absolutely yeah. do. Um, yeah. and, and in fact, whether or not can something like trauma open those gifts as well right 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 so well we even we've even talked about how um you know if you you know if your child maybe has a gift or something like that and they come to you and say hey uh you know saw this old man or or you know who were you talking to it was my friend to not just immediately dismiss it as imagination right that right it, that right could, could actually be something so Right. Yeah. Well, and, and it's like, um, you know, our friend Victoria was telling me a story. She has a ton of scary stories. And one of the things she talked about um, was when she was a kid, you know, she heard these rappings on her door outside of her bedroom and she told her parents about it. And finally they said, fine, we'll stay the night and we'll see if we hear it. And then they hear it as well. And they go out there. There's nobody there. There's nothing. And they sat her down and they were like, Victoria, we're pretty sure you have a ghost <laughs> and she, <laughs> she flipped her shit. So it's like, yeah. you yeah. know, but I mean, you know, you know, it's like, do we tell them the truth of what we think and feel, you know? I mean, I don't know. It's, it's one of those things I can't Double imagine. Sword. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it really is. And you know, I think depending on the area you live, um, I kind of live in the Bible belt 
Um, us too, yeah. It depends on the people that kind of live around you determines how they're going to take that information. And, you know, I'll tell you the whole story about the paranormal help desk when it's time. But mm-hmm. um, it is a prime example. And it is the reason why I do what I do for sure. Well, let's go ahead. Let's move right into uh, the interview. All right. All right, so like we said, um, we have Tori Smith here from the Paranormal Help Desk, um, which is an absolutely amazing, amazing page and and just thing that you guys do. Um, And Josh, I'm going to hand over the reins a little bit to you because you have been handling this a little bit more, but just already, Tori, thank you for even doing this. This is Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for having me. I mean, this is the first interview I've done, and I'm not even sure how long I've had the help desk. I think it's probably been 10 years. That maybe surprises me. That yeah. surprises me. So, like so yeah. I like so, to stay behind the scenes mostly. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it was, it was funny when I reached out to the help desk, and we were talking back and forth, and finally I had to say, what's your name? And so, cause, <laughs> uh, cause, <laughs> um, but, yeah, so the, uh, the paranormal help desk, I mean, it was really cool. Uh, I think um, – you know, Stefan, I think maybe you you had shared some of the stuff that uh, that Tori, I guess, that you had, you had shared on your page, and and so I just got to looking into it, and like this is a really cool, uh, really cool idea and a really cool service, if you will, uh, for people. And so, if you, if you want to just take a couple minutes and talk about, you know, what what the Paranormal Help Desk is, what what your goal is, and then maybe a little bit about like how you got started with it. Okay. Well, the Paranormal Help Desk, what I do, I am the only person on that page. I run the whole thing. I don't have any help. Um, Basically, what I do is I find uh, paranormal teams to investigate the homes of people who are experiencing hauntings. Mm -hmm. And I do this worldwide and free of charge. Um, I've had cases in the UK, Australia, in the States, of course. Um, I haven't had any in South America Not yet, anyway. um, I've had some in Ireland. Um, Basically, what I do is somebody messages me and tells me that they're having an issue. And I basically, I get their location, where they're at, and a good phone number. And I get their whole story from top to bottom. You know, I basically tell them, I want you to tell me everything. Anything that you deem important, anything that bothers you, tell me your experiences. Um, Really... I, I almost feel bad when I'm questioning them because it, it, it's really intense because I want to get a good feel for what they're going through and what I could pass on to the team. Right. So <clears throat> from there, I, bas- I, I post what I call an all call on the paranormal help desk and I need a team that services, let's just say Austin, Texas. I just need a team right. that services that area. Um, usually I will have someone message me and say, Hey, I'm in this area. What do you got? And basically I take screenshots of the entire conversation and I send it to them. So they know everything that I know and, uh, make sure that this is something within their capabilities of dealing with. Um, and then I message the person that the person seeking help, I message, message them back and tell them, this is your team. This is your team leader. This is the phone number they're calling from. And basically I stick with them through the whole process. Um, if, if they have any questions about their team, I'm there. And I'm also, I also, also serve as, um, help for the team that took the case and any other team really. Um, if I don't get somebody that hits on like the all call, what I call the all call, then I do it old fashioned. Um, basically I go through and I search the area and there's a website online called paranormal societies. I think it's called, and I'll look through there and because you can search by state, Mm -hmm. um, and then you can kind of find the cities. The only thing I hate about that is it's severely outdated. A lot of the teams on that site are no longer, working together there it's not in any kind of order so it takes a long time and then i'll 
have like a map up of let's just say Austin and the surrounding areas and I'll I'll look at the surrounding area. I mean it takes a long time. It almost um, I also, it almost sounds like it's um, the, that it probably hasn't been updated. It almost sounds like we need to find somebody to get you hooked up with that website on your own, you know, yeah. where, where there's all that information there just on paranormalhelpdesk.com or something like that. Yeah, that would be amazing. Just having it like a resource like that, because mm -hmm. I mean, there are thousands of people listed on there but like i said like i'll send messages i'll never hear anything back i'll call they're like well we're not and we're not we don't do anything anymore um so like i said it's severely outdated i'll look on facebook um i'll send messages to i usually send messages to like three or four teams and wait to hear back from somebody <clears throat> and see if they're willing to take the case or whatever so it does take a long time but most of the time i can find a uh, team to take a case in about 12 hours or so and that's overseas yeah that's really good turnaround time really I mean so, it's and, and I like to I don't know I, the, the people at Angie's List might get mad but I like to think that you know you're kind of doing like a you're vetting the 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 people that you're um, hooking up with with you know the the people who've reached out they're not take they're not set up to take advantage of whoever because there's a lot of Unfortunately, right. unfortunately, in the space that we're in, there are some teams out there who are not necessarily as professional as others. Yeah. We, we hear are, that we hear that all the time, talking to Keith Age from the Louisville Ghost Hunter Society, who's a good friend of ours, and Todd Bonner from Detroit Paranormal Expeditions. They talk about that all the time, about right. those people that are out there that take advantage, and it sucks. I mean, Keith's been doing this. Yeah, what do he say, like 25, 30 years or whatever, and he's, yeah. never, he's never charged for a single case? You know, right. Like, and I will never send, I will never send a team that charges anything. I, yeah. I would never do that. You know, and I also find specialties, um, depending on what, um, they outline uh, the activity. Um, I find a lot of times that people think that it's demonic, um, nine times out of 10, that's what I get. Yeah. And, <laughs> And I'm like, understand that, I mean, honestly, if a ghost was an asshole when they were alive, they're going to be an asshole when they're dead. Yeah. <laughs> there's a difference between, you know, demonic and, and nephris in nature. Yep. Right. So, um, you know, a lot of that stuff I come up with, you know, I don't know. There's just a whole line of questions that I ask them to make sure that, um, and I, I will tell the team that too, what I think of it. And, um, you know, I think that this may be pretty bad or, you know, right. just kind of give them an idea of what they're dealing with. But I did actually have a bad experience with a team once. I had a family contact me. Um, I'm not going to say the state because I don't want to call anybody out per se. <laughs> <laughs> but... Um, one thing I tell the families that contact me or the people that contact me, if you're not happy with your team, let me know. Let me find a replacement because I'm here to help you. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not here to, I mean, I'm here to help teams, but not when I'm doing a case like their safety and their comfort, the, how they're comfortable is what's important to me. I want to make sure that they feel safe because you are having strangers come in your home and walk around your home and be around your stuff. And right. it's important that, families feel comfortable with that <laughs> especially when kids are involved oh yeah, definitely for sure and it's great so, to hear that you aren't just like grabbing somebody that you're doing as much research as possible to make sure that they're a good fit for them right, uh, as right. well as someone that's not gonna you know damage them you know essentially. I try very hard very hard and that's um, really this, respectable this family contacted me and they said look I don't know about this person I you know this is what they did they came in and they were saying they were getting EVPs but I could hear them talking like they were creating their own paranormal evidence ah. and it was really quite obvious mm -hmm. and I was like oh no <laughs> this is terrible and so I, I said well look, give me an opportunity to find somebody else and this actually turns out to be a pretty cool story and he's like, man, I don't know about this. I don't know if I want to go through with this. And I said, I will, you know, let me find somebody else. And if you decide that you don't want to do it, that's okay. It, you know, and, and whenever you're ready, I will be here for you. And we, we will find a team or whatever. So 
<clears throat> I ended up finding another team. They went in, they did their thing. Um, the family that that contacted me, he actually does paranormal investigating now with the team that came to his house. Wow. Oh, wow, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, so they... He, he really got into it. He liked the way that they did things. They found some stuff in their home, and now he, he goes through and he does investigating with this team. So I thought that was pretty awesome. That That is really, that is, um, yeah, that's just really cool. Yeah, that's um, what you want to hear, you know, yeah. and, and I'm sure that that happens um, a lot, to be honest. So Yeah, me and that family keep in touch, actually, on a, a pretty regular basis. They're pretty cool people. That's awesome. So uh, I guess when when you so you, you said you've been doing the paranormal help desk for about ten years. Mm-hmm. Is there is there something that happened that said you know you said to yourself, man, this really needs to be a thing, and so you stood it up, or is there, or did you just out of the blue one day you're like, you know what, that sounds like a pretty cool thing. I think I'll you know. It's, was it? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, <clears throat> actually, what happened was. Um, when I was young, we moved into this house. It was it was a big house. I remember when my family went and looked at it. Um, I remember looking at it as a kid. It, I mean, it honestly looked like somebody just picked up and left. It was it was odd. There was like I remember seeing cobwebs everywhere. It was it was so crazy. Wow. Anyway, I was probably around five years old. Um, that is when I saw my first ghost um, in that house. I remember laying under the bed. And my door was open, and there was a light coming through uh, from the room. Like, it was directly in front of me, but it was all the way across the house. So it cast, like, a little light. And I remember seeing, like, a shadow that would go back and forth um, Mm -hmm. across the doorway. But there was nobody there. All you could see was the shadow on the floor that it was casting. But you couldn't actually physically see anything um, going across the doorway. Wow. (laughs) So my, I remember talking to my parents about it. They didn't, they didn't believe me. I mean, I'll just be quite honest. Not that they're bad people for it. Yeah, (laughs) surprise. You know, it's just your imagination. Just your imagination. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, I, my name would be called quite frequently. I would smell um, pretty nasty smells in there a lot. I, I wouldn't say it was like sulfur or, I mean, you know, back, you know, it, I lived there until I was probably 14, but mm-hmm. back back in the day, you know, my five to 14 year old brain, what was really happening and what I thought was happening were probably two separate things. Sure. You know right. what I mean? So, yeah. I, and, and then plus when you're scared, everything is, you know, 10 times Heightened. worse than yeah. what yeah. you probably you know, perceive it to be. You know, we've heard, we've heard, um, or from various people we had you know Andrea Pear on uh, on a, a, a few weeks back and she talked about her experience uh, you know with the parent family haunting and and that they would often smell uh, what kind of smelled like uh, uh, rotting flesh yeah or sewage and, uh, even. Yeah. or sewage even yeah so yeah. yeah it was it was a bad smell I don't know what I would equate it to now simply because I just remember it being bad I right don't, know right. that I necessarily remember exactly what it was, but I remember I didn't like it. <laughs> right. Yeah, I mean, it, it was bad enough that it, that it imprinted on your memory, right? So, I mean, it was, it was a bad For me, it would just be broccoli and Brussels sprouts. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It smells like a fart in your house all the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, like, during that time, um, like I said, I, I would have my, my name would be called one of the, one of the, one of the most memorable experiences I had was I was sitting in my room and the carport to this home was right outside of my bedroom. So I heard a car pull up. I heard the the car door open and shut. I heard footsteps go up to the front door. I heard the front door open and shut. And then I heard say my mom, what I thought was my mom say, Tori. And I'm like, what? And I didn't hear anything. So I peeped out the window, um, and there was nobody there. The car was not there. There was like nobody there. <laughs> yep. That, that is a phenomena that I'm surprised there is not a term for. It is something I've talked about with Josh and our old co-host before is that daily I hear my name called 
daily. Yes. And it is yes. something I have experienced as long as I can remember being alive, that I can remember my name being called. And um, my mom left when I was younger. And so for a long time, it was her voice that I would hear. Um, but it's just different voices. And I hear my name called. And sometimes I can say, oh, my name's Stefan. So if somebody said seven, you know, maybe right. I can let that fly. But man, I mean, multiple times a day, I hear my name called. It's just, yeah. it's crazy. And that, it's look, there's no term for it. So I don't know. Yeah, and that, that's what it was like growing up for me. Um, probably around 10 years old, I would say, um, we had this huge great room that, that was off of like our front room, but we didn't really use it for anything, but it was a giant room. And um, I was walking through the uh, what we called our dining room, and to the left of our dining room was that great room, and I was walking through there to the kitchen, and <clears throat> I turned my head and I looked, and that's the first shadow person, actually the first and probably only shadow person I've ever seen in my life. And it was wow. so scary. Wow. You know how um, like men, when they get angry or they're getting ready to fight, they kind of puff up their shoulders and their yeah. arms. Yeah. It yep. was in that stance and it was so black that it looked like somebody took the cookie cutter in the shape of that form and just stamped it out of the landscape. Ugh. Ugh. And, so like not not kind of fuzzy around the edges like no I think. no it was like crystal clear sharp edges and it was so black you couldn't see through it it was the blackest thing i've ever seen like in my that, life that vanta black yes like Oof. yeah and you couldn't see and it, it it just stood there and i didn't I, I was like what the hell and i just like I just turned and kept walking because I'm like, I don't know what to do right now. <laughs> That's when you scooby do run out of there. <laughs> yeah. I'm I mean, just going to pretend like I didn't see it, you know? And yeah. I I walk into the kitchen and I peeked back around the corner and it was gone. Wow. That's the only time I ever saw it. <laughs> and it was, it was, that was terrifying. And, and then after that, I remember feeling safer sitting outside alone in the dark than I did in my own home. Wow. And it, it was so scary all the time. I was always hearing things. I was always smelling things. Um, and every time that I would talk about it, nobody would believe me. Even my peers, even talking about it with my peers, you know, they're like, you're crazy. I mean, because the, I mean, we're talking about back in the eighties, I'm 39. Yeah. I'm 40. 40. Yeah. I'll be 40 <laughs> this year. So back during that time period, they didn't have stuff like they have now. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure there obviously were people that did investigating, but you couldn't find it back yeah, we, then. We talked about that with Todd Bonner. He's also our age as well. And he was talking about that. And his dad was a sheriff. And, and you know, we, we, there wasn't even like the amount of shows or anything. It was basically right. like unsolved mysteries um, and the occasional thing here and there. But yeah, I, I guess I was lucky. All my friends, we were all obsessed with the paranormal and stuff. So we all believed everybody's stories, probably to the point of people making stuff up. But, <laughs> you know, right? Like, you know, but yeah, I remember that it was do not bring that up, you know, especially in the Bible Belt or I was from Toledo, yes. big Catholic. I mean, you just didn't talk about that stuff. Yeah. Yes. And, you know, my father doesn't believe in ghosts and that's, that's the way that he was raised. And I, and, and I don't fault him for that at all. I don't mm -hmm. have, you know, he, he respects my belief. He doesn't downplay me for it. He's like, if that's what makes you happy, then that's what makes you happy. And, you know, I'm all for it, you know, but he's not, he's not a believer in paranormal anything. <laughs> um, after I wasn't actually the only one that ever felt anything in there. Some of my friends did, but sometimes I wonder if that was just influenced by what I had said. Sure. Cause when you talk yeah. about like creepy things, people are like, Oh God, you know, oh, I'm yeah. coming here. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, interesting. Uh, fast forward when uh, the dead files with Amy Allen came on. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that years? I and do. Years ago? I do. Yeah. I was watching that show one night and they were talking about, you know, oh, you need a shaman to come in and do the like some ritual or a medium or a medicine doctor person. And I'm like, how the hell do you find one of them? Like, right. even if you knew what was wrong, like, how do you find one of those? Like, Especially how do before people... the internet, man. Like, <laughs> well, see, there used right. to be these. There used to be these books that people would put out. They were yellow, and they had business listings in them. So yeah, but they, they don't have. Phones. 
They don't have shaman. <laughs> How do you know? What's the last time you looked in the yellow pages for didn't shaman? They, didn't they have like things in Louisville? They had like the shepherd book and it was like businesses owned by Christians or something yes. like that. They yep. need a, one that's like pagans and, and shamans yeah. and like stuff like that. That's what they need. Well, they don't actually make phone books anymore, I don't think. So that's if they do, it's a waste of paper. Do they really? I, I have one. Yeah. Oh, they wow. Just, <laughs> yeah, there's. They still make them. It's pretty much just businesses now. Not. Um, you don't get the white pages yeah. too with all the residential listings. Yeah, there's, there's old white people. pages in there. I think it's like at request only. Like, yeah. they don't give them out like they used. I to, need to know? see what Morty's phone number is. <laughs> <laughs> I can't use the interwebs. I need my white pages. I mean, because you still got your like older population. I mean. Gosh. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Pretty much people have landlines because uh, Spectrum or S Charter or whoever makes us have that landline to get the bundle. And then they pretty <laughs> much people just use the landline uh, for bill collectors. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. That's turn the, the ring line. Yeah. Turn the ringer off. <laughs> you, go, you, yep. you go to some you go to some convention and they're giving away a free trip to Hawaii and they yes. require a phone number. Yep. And you put that you phone put number. Landline. Yep. Yeah. That's funny. And so. so yeah, go ahead. I was going to ask, how does that move into the next step? <laughs> well, I was sitting there and I was like, well, I don't know how anybody would find one of these. And then I put my experiences together, plus the thought of how do you find one of these? And the Paranormal Help Desk was born. That's beautiful. That's how it came about. And that's all so, she wrote. I didn't want anybody to ever feel like I did growing up because that was truly terrifying. It was scary. Oh, um, yeah. It was very scary. And then it was even scarier thinking that you were alone. I mean, nowadays, people aren't really like that anymore. People are more open to the possibility of paranormal phenomena than they were back in the 80s. Um, and yeah. it existed, but I think it all depended on the area in which you lived and all well, that. Well, we, we talked think it a also lot, too, that the 80s was big on the satanic panic. So anything... Yeah. Yeah. outside of the norm was kind of lumped in with the satanic panic you know that was I, yeah. I would even say that probably uh there have there have probably been close to the same a, a percentage of people who believe in it over the years the the big change though is that now with social media we're all able to connect and share with each other right those mm -hmm. experiences and everything because so, back in the 80s they're probably still the same you know here we have three people right now on the phone or, or on the, uh, you know, doing this podcast who believed. And so if you extrapolate those numbers out, there are probably a lot more in the 80s who did believe. But the right. lack of those social connection points to to get together and discuss, right. um, you know. Well, and exist. for me, I mean, for me, my first idea, essentially, besides just my friends, that there was a bigger community at large. God, this is going to age me, but was the AOL chat rooms. Oh, you know, I remember those. Yeah, I was in so many. I was on my friend Justin's account, and I was on so many like paranormal <laughs> chat rooms. You know, like talking to people and being like, "Oh my god!" Like just scared out of my mind yeah. hearing these stories that are scarier than mine. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's uh, yeah. It it's been quite the quite the journey to say the least, and, you know, back when you were young, or at least in the area that I live, you know, people just didn't talk about that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, it wasn't something that they talked about and it was really hard to, to talk about it and get someone to listen. Yeah. Well, and I mean, it's, it's funny because, you know, the opposite now exists. Like we said, there's so many people talking about it now that people are like, Oh, they're just saying it cause it's popular, you know? And it's like, ah, uh, it's like there's no winning skeptics. Yeah. There's just, there's, <laughs> right. There's no winning. It, it's the same it, thing. It's like how, um, you know, that homosexuality is is a lot more open, right? Which is great. Right. Then these people that are against it are still like, oh, these kids are only doing it now because it's popular. Right. You know? And I'm like, <laughs> nah, you're missing the point here. Yeah. Right. Right. And, and uh, you know, back when I was a kid, it was – and I remember thinking at 13, 14 – 15 years old, it's like, I'm not asking you to believe me. I'm asking you to wholeheartedly look into it as if yeah. what I'm telling you is the truth. Right. Yeah. I'm, I'm not asking you to have a conclusion based off of anything I say. I just want you to look into it because it's scaring me. And this right. is me trying to communicate that with you. 
Yep. And then, so, and, you know, along with the Paranormal Help Desk, I am a huge fan of Paranormal Unity. I love sharing everything paranormal. Um, mm-hmm. I like sharing events and podcasts and, uh, oh gosh, you name it, Patreon pages, YouTube pages, um, everything, blogs, blogs, you name it. And I, right. I'm sharing it. I, I love to share it. Um, I also act as a resource for other paranormal teams. I had a paranormal team reach out to me um, not too long ago, and they were dealing with what they believe to be a demonic case. And actually, after I spoke with this person, I, I'm pretty convinced that's exactly what he was dealing with. And it, mm. I mean, it was pretty intense. And he's like, I'm not afraid to tell somebody that I'm in over my head, and I'm telling you yeah, that good. I don't know how to deal with this can you help me? And that's what I did. I spent the next 12 hours looking at pastures and Reiki masters and like all these, (laughs) all these like resources trying to find out like, how can I help this guy? Do I look at demonology? You know, because when you talk about like demons and, and, and demonic entities, are we talking about like, a spiritual attachment do you, is that do you utilize like reiki masters or are right. you looking at more of a like a biblical thing do you need a pastor or an exorcism you know what i mean yeah, so yeah. I actually I'm, ended up- I'm a reiki master and i can tell you right now nobody's asked me to remove a spirit <laughs> but i would i would <laughs> so i like i ended up sending him like I gave him contacts for a well-known preacher, pastor, person, clergyman, I guess Mm -hmm. you would say, in that kind of area, a Reiki master and a a really strong medium. And I'm like, this is what I got. So (laughs) that's fantastic. um, That is so. So as far as I know, they've been keeping in contact and stuff. So I mean, hopefully they get that get that taken care of. So I, I, I just want to thank you for that. Thank you for being that for people that that's out yeah. there because oh, I you. mean, like I said, it's like I can remember being young and having these things happening and just had nowhere to go and nowhere to turn to. And, you know, and that's, yeah. that's why we have this podcast. I mean, we're trying to put this out there too. We share a listener story every single week and a UFO sighting every week to tell people, Hey, we believe you, you right. know, right. share that with us. We want to, you know, and let us know, let us be a resource. We, we share everything we can as well. And um, we try to cover everything because it's that same as you. It's like, this is more than just a community. It's right. an experience that people are from all walks of life. I mean, last week we just had right. Santiago uh, Cirillo. He was a guy on Walking Dead and he is also a paranormal investigator and he has these gifts and all these things. And it's like, we come from all sorts of different walks of life. It isn't right. just a bunch of group of nerds that live in their mom's basement. You know, right. like we are, there are politicians, there are, you know, there are rich people, poor people, all sorts from the spectrum that share these different experiences. Yes, paranormal phenomenon is universal. Mm -hmm. I mean, it can happen to anyone. It happens to the people that are not expecting it. It happens to people that just dabble in it and then end up coming across something that they can't deal with. Um, You know, I've, I've had people that have contacted me and said, hey, I went to this haunted cemetery, you know, using a spirit box just because I wanted to see what would happen. And now I have stuff happening in my home, you know, (laughs) You know, it's it can happen to the inexperienced, the experience. I mean, it really can happen to anyone. Yep. I don't personally investigate. I've been to a few events um, here and there, but I don't actually personally investigate. I haven't. Yeah, same with us. We, we occasionally will kind of yeah. join in or do something. But, yeah, we're more about putting the information out there, and right. we love research and and seeing right. what we can find and, uh, you know, digging deep into people's stories, into topics and right. things like that. Yeah. But, you know, yeah, not, we, not to say we won't, yeah. but <laughs> I mean, we, we've done some, uh, you know, we've done some Estes uh, method sessions and things like that, just kind of poking around, but, uh, but nothing really, uh, I think we did, I think we've done one investigation that we did a podcast episode on and, uh, <clears throat> and Keith has asked us to go out a couple of times. We might do that in the future, but, but yeah, it's more about, uh, again, that, that uh, delivery or, or a conduit, if you will, for other people to get their stories out there and to, yeah. um, to know that, 
that we're all connected and we're all here for each other, right? So. Right, and it, and it's I, I I really believe that if we all work together in a positive way, we could really accomplish a lot. I mean, it's not just me. I work closely with a lot of people. I also run another group. It's called the Paranormal United uh, Network, and I run that group with Shadow Encounters and uh, Ghost Tech. Um, I Gary nice. is the the lead founder of Shadow Encounters, and I'm actually gonna go on an investigation with that team sometime whenever we're all out of quarantine. <laughs> right. <laughs> Can't so do an investigation over Zoom. <laughs> yeah. I'm excited about that. I have travel restrictions as a nurse. There's a lot of places I can't go just because of what's going on. So um, I'm pretty much stuck at home or at work. And that's that's pretty much my day. But um, yeah, it's I like going to events here and there. I am, in December of last year, I went to Malvern Manor um, for a Friday the 13th deal. That was a lot of fun. Nice. Um, that place is that's badass. I'm just saying. <laughs> it's, so it's a cool. pretty cool place. I mean, it's big, it's terrifying, and I didn't die. So, <laughs> and nothing, nothing came back home with you. No, not not to my knowledge. Now, I used to come to my house from time to time. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. Um, actually, my daughter, my oldest daughter, was talking about um, hearing things in her room not too long ago. So. Wow. So it's funny because I imagine you essentially being the Janine of the paranormal world. You get to be the one that answers the phone calls, you know, and let everybody know we got one, you know, like, (laughs) and I love that. I love that you are this third party that, you know, you may not know where to go in your town, but we can go to Paranormal Help Desk and we can find help. Yep. I will absolutely do it. And I and, get excited. Yeah. And, you know, of course, we're already sharing that. Um, and we're going to keep sharing it and letting people know um, as well as we do with Keith's group and things like that. But, I mean, we have reach all over the country. I'll be moving to Arizona soon. And it's like we need to let more people know about this. And it I is it. such a fantastic, just great. I mean, these stories that you're sharing with us um are so great just you know the these families that are getting help and then they're becoming investigators or um having investigators that are coming to you as well and to think that you're just one person yeah just mind-blowing i the last the last case that i had out of the uk i was actually recommended by a paranormal team in the uk wow so i thought that was pretty cool that is really cool (laughs) Yeah. Like all the way over there. How do you know about me? Because you know what? I've never been one for like page likes. The only time that I, I mean, I've run ads for the paranormal help desk to get page likes, but it's not because I want the page likes. It's because I want someone to know that I exist. Exactly. Exactly. Everything that I do is all about paranormal unity. Actually, I had a contest uh, probably a month ago or something, but this contest, basically the point was, was that in order to enter, anybody could enter, they had to go and subscribe to um, YouTube pages of these different paranormal teams. Yeah. There was like 10 of them. And if you won, like if you had to share screenshots and if you did it, you were entered to win. Um, and then what you won was um, a month long s- subscription to Josh Hurd, who is the owner of Malvern Manor, mm-hmm. um, his Patreon page. And then you got uh, a one month subscription to Ghost Crier, which is Aaron Thompson's uh, Patreon page. And then um, by the end of it, and when I was giving these away, um, G Crew came out. Um, it's a Patreon page um, of Nick Groff, Chad Lindbergh, Josh Hurd, and Johnny Hauser. And they do these interviews on Patreon. So I gave everybody one of those. So wow. none of it benefited me at all. I mean, yeah. it wasn't even a requirement to like my page. You just had to support the paranormal community. So, you know, yeah. I just want to make sure, you know, my, my intentions are pure. I, I just, I just want to help people. And, and I've done it my entire life. Um, I, I worked on an ambulance for 17 years before I became a nurse. Wow. Um, <laughs> 
my my whole life this is this is my my goal is to help people and i absolutely love doing it and i love that people trust me enough to do it for them because absolutely. it takes a lot to walk up to somebody that you've never talked to or you've never met to and tell them like intimate details of your life because you know paranormal activity is personal and it's scary and it's hard to say sometimes especially when it's stuff that sounds so ridiculous that people are like i don't, I don't know you know what i mean it, yeah. it takes a lot to share that it, yeah it takes a lot of, it's a lot of trust to uh it is to, to not only reach out and share your story but then to uh to be willing to let uh some group that you've never <laughs> worked with before or even right. maybe talked with before into your home. I mean, it's, it's yeah, a very into your private space right, into your private. Right. You know, yeah, exactly. You know, right. and it's interesting because, um, uh, whereas paranormal in terms of ghosts and hauntings and stuff like that is getting a little more popular, um, UFO sightings and alien abductions and, and the sort is still seemingly very taboo. Right. Have you yeah. ever had any um, people come to you about that side of the paranormal um, saying, hey, I've got these aliens that are in our backyard or anything along those lines? Have you had to deal with anything along those lines? No, not alien. I did have someone message me um, about a vampire before. Um, okay. No. I, like I said, I don't judge people. Exactly. And- That's what I was thinking, too. I'm <laughs> like, could be. Who knows? We I don't mean- know. I take everything that they say at face value and and I I I told this person I said honestly I don't I don't know much about that but I can talk to some people that are into cryptids and maybe they might know something and I may be able to refer you to that but I will keep looking until I find at least somewhat of an answer to to your question or to your problem and they opted not to do that they I, I mean, I do get trolls from time to time, you sure, know, people that sure. message for stuff. I, it, was that what that was? I have no idea, but you know. Well, you know, sometimes people will, I think, um, they'll have kind of an experience that pushes them to the edge and they'll reach out for help. And then, right. then I think they, they also will sometimes start to rationalize and, you know, you no, that's not really what happened or you were seeing right. things or whatever. Right. So I wouldn't be surprised if, if that was a legitimate experience that you wouldn't necessarily have it, you know, hap- you wouldn't have that reach out happen again, again, when they had some kind of experience or encounter that again, pushed them beyond their limits. So. Right. And, and I've been through all of that just myself. I remember being so scared that I just wanted to crawl out of my skin. Yeah, like, me too. I, I mean, it's terrifying. It's terrifying where you just don't know what to say. You don't know what to do. Uh, you're frozen. Who do I talk to? So, yeah, I, I mean, I and all you all you can do is is use your own experience. I mean, you know, Josh and I try to be very, very open with each other, not only in private, but in public about these things on our mm-hmm. podcast. That's why we do creepy catch up. And, you know, some of this stuff may seem crazy. Like, you know, Josh yeah. and I are pretty certain there's some sort of Wendigo or Wushu guy that's hiding in his woods behind us. You know, yeah. like, but it's like we don't know that that's the thing. And it's like, why not try to figure that out? I mean, it's like, you know, when you think about Christianity, it's so very easy to believe in something there, right. That's not that we have no proof of, you know, so why is it so difficult to believe in this, you know, we have, you know, more proof of it in a, in a sense. Right. Yeah. It's, I just never want to be that person. And oddly, when people message me and we're like getting through the questions, you know, they they often say, well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but this is like, don't apologize. Don't apologize for sharing what your perception of what happened to you. I mean, there's nothing to apologize for. You know, I'm an open book. I mean, you can tell me anything and I promise <laughs> I have not, uh, there, you're not going to say something I haven't heard. Promise. Right. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. Especially after 10 years. Um, I mean, I want to proselytize for you. I mean, <laughs> like, that's, <laughs> like, because, you know, we talk about this as spirituality, you know, it's, it's, it's its yeah. own spirituality, but it's like, yeah, I want to go yeah. knocking door to door and say, Hey, we believe you. Here's a resource. You know, if you ever have anything, you know, yeah. Reach out, reach out to the paranormal help desk. We'll help you find somebody. I mean, it's just like, I mean, I, yeah. fe- I feel like I've already joined the army. 
Tori. Yes. <laughs> Your will, P- PhD I, army, man. Don't think I won't reach out to you now that I didn't know that you do like all these UFO stories. I'd be like, hey guys, I had somebody mm-hmm. contact me. <laughs> yeah, it, <laughs> oh, I, I, for sure. you know, we didn't start the show out that way. We definitely started out more kind of haunted and cryptid based, but man, the last like couple months, just things have been happening with us. That's been insane yeah. <laughs> in terms yeah. of UFOs. And, and we, I guess you open yourself to it. That's what happens. Yep. You know, I heard an interesting theory. Um, what, where did I hear that? I heard it or read it and I can't remember, but they were talking about maybe the coronavirus was put by, by like alien life form. And I can't mm-hmm. remember where I read that. Or- I've been reading a couple things like that. Well, yeah. and I, I even have a, uh, this is a, a, a more of a government-based conspiracy theory, but what if, what if the coronavirus was, is targeting aliens living amongst us, like extraterrestrial aliens, not, That's an know. interesting thought. Yeah, it's kind of like weeding them out. It's like that movie, They Live, right? Where oh. <laughs> you can see the true aliens and be like, here's Corona, Patel! <laughs> <laughs> yep, you're hey, one. Go lungs. <laughs> yeah, but who knows? Who knows? I mean, that that's the yeah. thing. Um, but, Tori, we're going to start to wrap things up, but we wanted All to right. say, again, thank you yep. so freaking much. You are thank you for having me. phenomenal. And, of course, stick around. We're going to do a listener story in a second. But, again, I wanted to give you an opportunity to plug your stuff to our audience. Well, I don't really have anything to plug. Um, you can go to www.facebook.com backslash the Paranormal Help Desk. That's where you can find me. Um, the group, the Paranormal United Network, that's run by um, Ghost Tech, Shadow Encounters, and myself. Um, you can just search that Facebook page and, and find that. I, I interact on there, but that's really all I have. <laughs> I yeah, don't. and we'll be, we'll be sharing all of that as well. Um, and we'll be adding you to our fate or I mean, excuse me, our website with those links on there in terms of the guests. Awesome. Um, so we want to make sure and put that out there because like I said, we, we are going to be sharing this and we've already been, we, we, we're a big fan already. Uh, you know, Josh has been looking forward to this for a while as have yeah. I. Um, and so it's really, really great. And it's just, it's so cool to hear how awesome you are too. Not just the <laughs> paranormal help desk, but you yourself are pretty cool. <laughs> oh, thank you. You guys are pretty cool too. I oh, appreciate it. For yep. Sure. So uh, I want to move into our listener story before we get out of here. Um, as usual, to our part. listener stories. Yes, I love it. Um, as usual, send your stories to us at fearscapepodcast at gmail.com or find us on any of our social media, which we'll tag at the very end. Um, send us those stories. You can send them to us via text, which most people do, and we'll read them. Or if you're feeling froggy, you can record your own voice and send that to us. Even a video, I know how to slice the audio out of it. So uh, this week, this listener story comes from one of our like I said one of our favorite places is Haunted History of Kentucky Facebook group Um, Stephanie Peach is whom the story comes from and uh, it's a doozy so here we go I've been wanting to tell my story for a little over a month now I hadn't yet because I really didn't know if I had a story to tell and if anyone would believe me once I told it I'd always been curious and believed in the paranormal, but I'd never experienced it myself until moving here. So it goes like this. May 5th, 2019. My fiance, 10 week old daughter and myself were crammed in a small bedroom at my uncle's, which is just outside of Louisville. When my fiance got a phone call from his previous boss and then a job offer to follow, we jumped at the chance to leave. The position was head maintenance man of a hotel but it did have its setbacks. We have no vehicle, so driving daily wasn't an option. Instead, we'd be allowed to stay in a room at the hotel free of charge. And I'll tell you, this was over twice the size of a room at my uncle's. But my fiance would have to take a huge pay cut in exchange for the room, and he'd be on call any hour of the night if something went wrong. So actually, the room was far from free. Now, we knew we'd have to stay there at least a year and save up for a place, but at least it was something for us to work toward. So to Louisville, Kentucky, we moved. October 20th, 2019. We were in the room for a full four months before we started noticing strange things. Every day when Jason, my fiancé, would come home, he'd lay his lanyard that held all of his maintenance keys on the dresser. And around mid-September, the lanyard would literally be feet away from where he laid them. 
And one day we searched for over an hour for the keys before finding them hanging on a hook on the back of the front door, nearly 10 to 12 feet from the dresser. For almost two months, we tried to explain it away, all while Jason thought he was losing his mind. We just both accepted the problem was us being sleep deprived with an eight month old until the 20th of October, that is. Jason had only had his new phone for two weeks and had misplaced it already at least five times. New things would pop up in strange places every day, but he kept his phone close. Well, this day he laid his phone on the dresser with the lanyard while on lunch as usual. But when he went to grab them and head out, the phone was gone. We have not seen the phone since that day and we both have no logical explanation. December 10th. 2019. Small things kept moving on their own for a couple of months and we just kind of accepted it. All the while stress and nerves were overtaken our once sound minds and we got into a major argument that day. See Jason and I have a matching black ring. They resemble wedding bands and while in this huge fight Jason gets mad, takes his ring off and throws it on the floor on his side of the bed. And all that was on the side of his bed were a bunch of boxes with papers and bills and a few boxes with random odds and ends. An hour later, Jason apologized for overreacting and we began looking for the ring. He looked for a solid week before we finally spoke the inevitable out loud. We said, I think we have something in this room. January 21st, 2020. We still had not found the ring, and we both were devastated about losing it. I woke up on the 21st, and Jason was already gone to work. I went to the restroom and went to raise up the top toilet seat, but it would not open. It was almost like something was catching on it. And I go to open it again, and there, on the bottom toilet seat in the center, lies Jason's ring. Yes, the ring that we had not seen since December 10th. Shocked but relieved, I smiled from ear to ear and held it tight in my hand until Jason got home from lunch. I almost screamed at him when he came in. I said, where did you find the ring? We looked over a month for it. Confused, he asked me what I meant. And as I explained it to him, his facial expression told me all I needed to know. He didn't believe me. He came around, though, after my passion and the story turned into tears from pain and to the accusations. And to this day, how that rain got on that toilet seat is a mystery to the both of us. January 28th, 2020. While giving my now one-year-old a bath around 4 or 5 in the p.m., I'm also video chatting with my brother. Halfway through the conversation, I hear this weird kind of breathing which sounded masculine and far away. My brother did not hear it, but he saw my reaction and we both agreed that it was probably the television which was turned down low or maybe a neighbor since I am in a hotel after all. Now I didn't think anything else of it, but having my brother witness my hearing it meant the world to me. It feels awful when you aren't taken seriously. January 30th, 2020. Just two days later, I'm at the sink doing dishes when the scariest thing in the world happens to me. I've got my head down doing dishes when out of nowhere I hear a masculine sigh. Or exhale around 4 or 5 p.m., just like the one from two days ago. But this time, it was not the TV. It was muted so that my baby could nap. And it couldn't have been my neighbor because it felt like the sigh or an exaggerated exhale was done with the person's lips right up against my ear. My hair was down and I literally felt my hair rattling against my ear when I heard this. Like whoever or whatever did this to me was up against my ear or hair. I screamed bloody murder right as I look at the mirror right in front of me. I saw nothing at all but my own reflection. And that day I avoided the end of the room until Jason came home. And he claimed to believe me, but I can tell he's just sparing my feelings. He believed that 100% of this, all of this, he says, that I 
believe all of this, but he thinks that there's got to be a logical explanation and that whatever the logical explanation could be, no one knows. March 20th, 2020. I've taught our baby girl, Abby, now 13 months, to put her arm up at the same time as if saying hello. I get greeted like that about 500 times a day, as her daddy does also. It is beyond precious. Well, just six days ago, Abby was sitting on the bed with me in her sit-me-up-eating lunch. In between each bite, she looks in the same corner of the room each time and waves while saying hi and smiling. All that's in the corner is our counter with dishes and clothes hung up on the other side. Now there's a mirror, but all that can be seen in the reflection are the clothes hanging up in front of the mirror. The spot where Abby was looking was about a foot away from the spot where I heard what I heard. Now Abby could have just been acting like me, you know, my silly little ditzy happy baby, but I find it weird that she would be looking waving and saying hi to the same spot over 10 times. We still get the usual items, not where we put them. Meanwhile, I just sit waiting for whatever's next with a mind, body, a soul full of anxiety. There has to be something paranormal happening here, but why aren't we seeing anything? I want photo evidence so bad so that Jason could see for himself, but I've only heard and never seen this entity. I just wonder if anyone could give me some feedback and please don't make me feel crazy. I know it's a long post, but it's my story and I didn't leave out any details and I'm sorry if I'm long winded, but it's my story. Wow. Yeah, and I, I remember, I remember reading that on, on Facebook and I think, uh, Tori, I even tagged the paranormal help desk in that because I thought, and this is a really o- good opportunity for maybe, uh, someone, you know, someone to come being that it's at a hotel. I don't know if the hotel person would allow that, but you know, there's right. clearly this person needs some answers. So, yeah. Yeah. I'll have to go back and look at that. I don't know that I saw that tag. If I did, I don't, Oh, I, I did see that tag. And I asked to join the group because <clears throat> I couldn't comment on it because it wouldn't let me. Okay. Because I wasn't part of the group. I don't think I ever got accepted. I don't know. I'll Probably, you know, it's it's all about Kentucky. But, you know, Josh, we might want to send this to like Keith or um, somebody along those lines as well. Because, yeah, if this is here in Louisville, um, you know, it's a hotel here. Would not, <laughs> it would not surprise me if it was like the Brown or the Seelbach or something along those lines. Um, I'd, I'd, I'd like to, I'm going to reach out to her myself. Um, cause a lot of times I only like to skim the story because I kind of want to, as I read, kind of find that emotion, that same emotion that they feel as they're right. experiencing it. I, I didn't read the part about the blowing wind into the ear and I'm like, Oh, I just said that just happened to me. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> and as I'm reading, I'm like, can't comment, can't comment. <laughs> I was waiting to see when the story was going to say that the baby was starting to acknowledge things. <laughs> I know. I'm yeah. going to be following up because, I mean, her last entry to the thing was March 20th, right? So it's now been, you know, another 10, 15 days. So I'm, yeah. I'm curious to see if she's got any new posts on there. And I'm going to hit her up and because uh, she graciously said we, you know, could share this story. And it's just a phenomenal story. And, you know, especially if it's one of those older hotels, we've already got so many people that have stories from those hotels it's yep. just, whew, yeah. just just a reminder people send your stories to us so not only will we share your story and you know dramatize it make it all that coolness but we will also if you need help you know if this is something that's ongoing and it's not like a story that oh when i was a kid this happened <laughs> so if this is like stephanie here is still dealing with this you know let us see if we can help you get some answers you know let us point you in the right direction we are all about doing that as well so it's not just sharing your local legend or or your old stories if you have a fresh story and you need help we can help you be a resource to find a resource like paranormal help desk which she is a broader network than what we have we will help you and so like i said send those stories to us at fearscape podcast at gmail.com 
gmail.com. Again, Tori, thank you so much for joining us today. We really, really thank you for having me. And if you guys ever need anything, just call her because yeah. I'm <laughs> Almost certainly use you guys as a resource. Yeah, right? for sure. We yeah. are meeting people left and right, and we've got a huge resource in Keith Age who knows everybody. Um, and so, you know, we would reach out to him if you didn't have it and uh, all that stuff. Um, but yeah, people uh, get on there, go to a Paranormal Help Desk, um, and click that like button and all that stuff. We're going to be sharing all of these links to all the stuff. Please, please patron those um, as well as our social media, Fearscape at Fearscape pod. That's on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Our YouTube is Fearscape media. All of that can be found on our website, fearscapepodcast.com. and tell them about our Patreon, Josh. Yep. So uh, if you, if you're a fan of the show and you just want to help us out a little bit, uh, be sure on fearscapepodcast.com to check out our Patreon. We've got a couple of different levels, I think four. And I think two of those levels uh, even include a free T-shirt of your choosing from our store, which is also available on our website, fearscapepodcast.com. Yeah, all of that. The Patreon, all the social media links, um, all of our guests' links and links to their books if they have books to sell, um, all of that stuff. Our store, it's all on the website. It's all right there, including past episodes. Um, you know, though, you know, hopefully you'll just keep listening on where you're listening. That's <laughs> fine. Um, but yeah, make sure to rate and review if you haven't yet. We love that. If, if the place you're listening has that ability, please do and share, share that we don't have, we don't have uh, billboards anywhere. Um, because yep. that's why we have Patreon. We as, need the money. So. As I was, I was, as, as I was told by my five-year-old yesterday, as she was throwing a fit. Uh, sharing is caring. So uh, sharing is caring. It is caring. So yeah, go ahead and share us. Share the paranormal help desk and uh, get out there. And uh, again, Tori, thank you. And uh, Josh, thank you. Always a pleasure uh, getting yep. to see you from my home at your home. Um, I can't <laughs> wait to meet back up and do this together again. Yeah. <laughs> so we can get out of the house. <laughs> get out of the house. Yeah, for real. Um, but yeah, make sure to check out our Fearscape Unhinged episodes and stuff on YouTube. We got some stuff there. And yep. uh, more stuff's coming. And uh, other than that, we're going to get out of here. And uh, so this has been Stefan, and I will catch you on the flip side. This has been Josh. The truth is out there. And remember, folks, uh, hold those blankets extra tight because 10. Things tend to get spooky with us, so uh, we'll catch you guys later. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. I'm so glad you were able to join us for that horrifying discussion. I hope they didn't frighten you too much. <laughs> Tune in next week for even more research into the nightmarish and haunting creeps and Spooks that we tell ourselves don't exist, but we know they do. Make sure you have your blankets and that you hold them extra tight. Next time on Fearscape. <laughs>